I want to go over what a sanctuary city is. I think there's a lot of confusion. People seem to think that a sanctuary city is a place where the city actually gives unlawfully present immigrants some sort of lawful status or right to work. That's not what it is at all. Sanctuary cities are nothing more than places where the city government refuses to provide any information to ICE. That's basically it. It's about the sharing of information. Until recently, there wasn't really a good definition of sanctuary city or sanctuary jurisdiction, but recently there was an executive order from January 25th of 2017. It's entitled Executive Order Enhancing Public Safety in the Interior of the United States. In this executive order, it has a definition of sanctuary jurisdiction. It states in Section 9, Part A, the Attorney General and the Secretary, in their discretion and to the extent consistent with law, shall ensure that jurisdictions that willfully refuse to comply with 8 U.S.C. 1373, in parentheses, sanctuary jurisdictions, are not eligible to receive federal grants, etc. This means that a sanctuary jurisdiction is a jurisdiction that does not comply with 8 U.S.C. 1373. Okay, what's 8 U.S.C. 1373? This is a section of law, a statute that was passed on September 30th of 1996, which means it was part of IRA-IRA. IRA-IRA is the most recent sweeping reform of immigration law from over 20 years ago. Now in this section, because it's a bit old, it's using an old agency name. It refers to the Immigration and Naturalization Service that broke up in the early 2000s. It splintered into several agencies, including CBP, USCIS, and ICE. So everywhere that it refers to the INS, just keep in mind the INS no longer exists. So they're basically referring to the various agencies involved with immigration. It states in part one, notwithstanding any other provision of federal, state, or local law, a federal, state, or local government entity or official may not prohibit or in any way restrict any government entity or official from sending to or receiving from the Immigration and Naturalization Service information regarding the citizenship or immigration status, lawful or unlawful, of any individual. The other sections are pretty similar. It says in Part B, notwithstanding any other provision of federal, state, or local law, no person or agency may prohibit or in any way restrict a federal, state, or local government entity from doing any of the following with respect to information regarding the immigration status, lawful or unlawful, of any individual, sending such information to or requesting such information from the Immigration and Naturalization Service, maintaining such information, exchanging such information, such information with any other federal, state, or local government entity. This is all about the exchange of information. Essentially, it says that if any of the agencies involved with immigration ask a federal, state, or local government agency about the immigration status of an individual, that agency has to respond. It may at first seem like this is some sort of government overreach, that they're trying to find out the immigration status of everybody. Keep in mind, they already know the immigration status of everybody who's here lawfully. The only reason they would have to ask is if the person was unlawfully present, if they didn't have any records on this person. If it's somebody who has a green card or some other sort of lawful status, the immigration agencies already know about that person. They already have that information. This is about unlawfully present immigrants only. So why would a federal, state, or local government agency have any information on somebody who's here unlawfully? There's already this requirement that people disclose their immigration status when they go to apply for employment, and ICE can do employment raids, including with government agencies, at any time and make sure that they're getting I-9s from everybody. So other than employment, what are some of the other situations where a government agency might know the immigration status of an unlawfully present immigrant? Well, there's a few. There's three big ones. One of them is they're applying for some sort of public benefit, such as food stamps or welfare or Medicaid. Another one is they're getting some sort of traffic ticket. And the reason the immigration status would come up is if the person doesn't have a driver's license, then the government agency is going to have to do something to verify identity. And then we start getting into immigration status. The third situation is if the person has been arrested for some sort of criminal offense. And it's that third one that's actually the really big one. When sanctuary cities are refusing to provide information to the federal government about somebody's immigration status, in particular an unlawfully present immigrant, 
it is usually in the context of a criminal case. So somebody gets arrested, for example, for robbery or for assault or domestic violence or something of that nature in a sanctuary city, they're not going to tell ICE that they have an unlawfully present immigrant who just committed an armed robbery. These are the types of situations where people are being protected in sanctuary cities. The primary beneficiaries are criminal aliens. This is very significant in terms of public safety and also for the expenditures of ICE. They understandably want to focus on criminal aliens. So they want to know if an unlawfully present alien has been arrested for a criminal offense so that they can come and get them and they can focus their attention on getting the criminal aliens. If they don't have the cooperation of the local police, then it becomes a lot harder for them to go out and find people and catch them, especially the people that we really want to be finding and catching for the safety of our communities. It makes it so much harder for ICE to do their jobs, which makes it more expensive. And that's why you see the price of catching and deporting people more than double when it's a sanctuary city where the person is located. I should point out that a lot of police want to cooperate with ICE, but the local jurisdictions are passing laws prohibiting them from doing so. So even if the policeman wants to tell ICE, hey, I just caught somebody who mugged some poor person out on the street, and the policeman wants to tell ICE, he actually can't, he could get fired because there's some sort of law passed on the local level that won't let him do that. That's what sanctuary cities are all about. I do want to spend just a minute talking about ICE holds because that's a little bit related to this. In the past, when local police had informed ICE that there was somebody who was probably unlawfully present in their jail cell, ICE would say, okay, hold that person until we can get over there and pick them up. And sometimes it would be two or three days before ICE was able to get over there. Now there was a dilemma that the police were having in this situation where there's a court order from a judge to release the person because under the local criminal laws, they had been bonded out. And then they had ICE saying, don't let them go. And in that conflict situation, they really needed to let them go because they have this court order from a judge saying, let them go. So that ICE hold situation is a little bit related to sanctuary cities because some of the cities were saying, that they wanted to not comply with the ice holds, which I totally understand where they're coming from with that. But under this new executive order, the president specified that what he's referring to as a sanctuary jurisdiction is a place that won't share information. He's sort of taken out of there the whole ice hold situation, and it's really now just about the exchange of information. I am going to be gone for a few days. I have a green card interview in Dallas, so I will be gone from Tuesday through Thursday. I'm going to make another video before I go and it will air on Wednesday, but there won't be one tomorrow on Tuesday and there won't be one on Thursday. If you want to get in touch with me, my email is contactlaurel at protonmail.com. Until next time.